Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for being punctual as usual. Uh, today, as you know, we are uh, ending this week, uh, another week of hard work. And I really want to congratulate you because you did an excellent job in, in the quiz, the quiz that you took on Monday. Well, I, I could see that some of you really, really got some interest in Van Gogh's letters. And also you found out a lot of information about his life, his art and everything that we discussed last week. And I really wanted to congratulate you. Maybe some of you got certain problems with the evaluation, but uh, I'm here uh, to listen and to try to help you as much as I can. And actually, I, I think I did. Um, so I don't know if you want to tell me, how are you? How are you feeling? It's the end of the week. Plans for the weekend? <laughs> Well, this weekend is not gonna be so fun because we have the elections, right? But anyway, do you have any plans? How, how are you feeling? Anybody who wants to share? How happy you Today is Friday. Yeah. 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 My, my parents yeah, are going to, to the elections and I stay alone in the house. Wow, it is gonna be party because you're gonna be alone. Yes party all day long but well, but my uh, brothers it is ah okay you will have company either way anybody else who wants to teacher share? i have a question tell me that adriel what book uh, use in this class uh, for this one the spotlight next week next week we're gonna be using the english id 1b Next week, we're going to use the English ID, but this week we're going to finish uh, the lessons in the spotlight. Well, we won't finish. We will finish the one that I have uh, chosen for you because, you know, uh, to cover the unit with two classes a week is, is impossible, right? It is impossible. Um, any other comments, questions? No? Okay, so let's move to today's lesson. So if you have your books, if you have your books, you can open them to page 18. We're going to work on exercises page 19 as well. We have a brief and easy explanation about the differences between dictionaries and glossaries. Dictionaries and glossaries is not the same. They look alike, but they are not the same. And we're going to uh, study the differences. Maybe you know them now, but uh, it's a... Um, uh, a topic that is on language workshop, and I think it's going to be kind of interesting for you to study on this. And if we have time, we're going to work on another topic, but today this is the one. Glossaries and dictionaries, page 18 and 19 in your spotlight on literature B. So this is what we are um, intended to cover today. The reflection, we're gonna talk a little bit about sincerity, and then we're gonna study over the lesson. So there we have uh, the quotation we're gonna reflect on today. Anybody wants to help me out reading, please? Hi, teacher. Okay, please. Uh, sorry, I didn't get your name, I didn't get your name. Daniela Eldani. Okay, Daniela, Daniela. Yeah, and now I see you. Okay. Sincerity seems to be a problem for some people these days, but I prefer to be hated than be a false person who tells lies. Wow, thank you. So those are very strong words to say, right? But deep inside, it's true. I'm going to give you my, my thoughts, what I'm thinking about this quote. And then uh, you tell me if you agree or disagree with me and why or why not. 
All right. Uh, it says that sincerity is a problem, but you 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 might probably say you might probably wonder, teacher, how sincerity can be a problem because we want people to come clean to us, but sometimes sometimes when you tell the truth to somebody else, that person gets mad at you. They don't like to listen. They don't like to hear the truth sometimes, and that's why become sincere it's uh, a problem for people these days like it says in the first paragraph then it also says that i prefer to be hated because if you tell the truth you won't be liked for other people so people who tell the truth people who are sincere and honest to others sometimes they're lonely people because they leave them behind because like i said people don't like to listen to the truth or to hear the truth but it's much better to be sincere than a fake person who always tells lies. And, and this is what I think. I think that people don't like to listen to the truth, but you have to remember something as well. Sincere is not a synonym of rude. Sincere is not a synonym of mean, right? Because every time that you gotta say something to anybody, and you must to have certain touch, I mean, uh, choose your words carefully and not to be hurtful. Try to not hurt people's feelings. And, and this is what I think, what I consider about this quotation. Now tell me if you agree or disagree with me and why. Please, two or three opinions. Hello. Are you actually online, my friends? Do you agree or disagree with what I said? Nobody's in here. I, I'm, I'm here alone. I'm, hi. Hi. Hello. Adriel. I'm so, lo siento, teacher. Es que creí que se me había congelado todo. Ah, okay. Don't be, don't be. Do you have anything to say about the quotation? So Chelsea said that she's, she agreed with my opinion. Okay, anybody else? Only Adriel and, and Chelsea and Daniela are in class. I also agree with you. Uh-huh, yeah, it's true. Okay, since we are four in the class, um, we're gonna have um, a very long class. And I see that we are 81, 81 participants, but maybe the avatars are here. You're not here. Well, it's up to you. Okay, now let's move to uh, the, the lesson of dictionaries. Like I said, uh, dictionary and glossary is not the same thing. It's not the same. There are differences. Uh, they are similar though, but they also have some some things that make the difference between one concept and the other. Okay, uh, so I need one volunteer, please. Uh, from the four, we are Thank actually you. present. Hi. Please, uh, from the first paragraph, dictionary. Me. Uh, everybody knows a dictionary. It's a reference book used to look up the meaning of the words, but a dictionary is much more than that. In a dictionary, not only can we find the definition of a word, but also how it is spelled, how it's pronounced, its etymology, etymology or origins, and its lexical category. That is, whether the word is a verb, an adjective, or a noun. Sometimes there are even notes of the words used, used, usage such how, as whether you should use it in a formal or an informal context. Thank you so much. 
So you see, a dictionary uh, is, is basically a book. Well, now we have online dictionaries as well. But let's think of the old fashioned concept that is a book. It's a book of references where we can look up the words that we don't understand in a language. We also have dictionaries in Spanish. So our native tongue is Spanish, but there are certain words that escape our minds and we have to look them up in a dictionary, especially in English. In English, you find oh, uh, um, the spelling, the pronunciation, the etymology. The etymology means where a, the word come from. Because remember that English language has words from different uh, nations. English is made of Greek, uh, Latin, German, French, uh, you name it. So English is a combination of multiple uh, languages. And also the lexical category, if they're adjectives, nouns, adverbs, etc. But teacher, teacher, in a glossary, you can also find this. And they are arranged in alphabetical order too. So then what is the difference? So uh, anybody who can help me reading the last paragraph? Hi, teacher. Please, thank you. A glossary on, on the other hand is more or less similar to a dictionary science. They are both uh, arranged in an alphabetical order. However, unlike the dictionary, where you can find, uh, find multiple means for a word, the glossary is complication of a specialized vocabulary task is terms related to a specific area with their means. Word will, word will worry depending of the content of the book. For example, at the end of a basic math book you might find a glossary of terms related to math such as equation exponent important fraction mixed number and neg negative numbers especially glossary can be very helpful when reading or studying and certain this displaying since it can help you grasp difficult terminology terminology thank you so much so i really i really enjoy when you uh, volunteer to read because this is the only way in which you can learn i really appreciate guys that you helped me out with this so um the glossary they have similarities they mentioned that the either uh, glossaries or glo or dictionaries are arranged in alphabetical order they also have the meanings of the words some of them have the pronunciation Actually, in your books, in the in the section of um, the the letters from Vincent Van Gogh, you you found a glossary at, at the bottom of every page. You have the meaning of words that probably are unfamiliar to you, because there are a lot of words that are unfamiliar in, in that text, and the book provides a glossary. So, but now the big question, the um, a million dollar question is, what is the difference between a dictionary and a glossary? Teacher. Uh-huh. Uh -huh, tell me. Chelsea says in the chat, teacher, yo le ayudaría, pero mi madre está posturno y no le quiero despertar. Teacher says uh -huh. Chelsea stand in the class. Ah, yeah, yeah. Teacher, I could help you, but my mom is in post post sheet and I want to wake her up. Oh, thank you, Chelsea. I, 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 I understand. And I don't complain about you because you participate in every single class. So you had excuse. Don't, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. Um, so like I said, um, do you have any, any ideas? Any ideas about the difference? The glossary is very easy for a study or a study exam math and dictionary is a reference book to look at meaning words. Aha, uh -huh. you, you have said something very interesting, Adriel. It helps you to study, for example, in math, 
like you have some uh, concepts there like equation, exponent, negative numbers, etc. And this is the answer. This is the answer, Adriel. But um, there's a general thing here. It's not only in math. So what is the difference here? For me, the difference are in the dictionary, you can find uh, a lot of meaning of a different words. In a glossary, you can find uh, the meaning of the words, but maybe in a, a specific topic. Yes, that is exactly what I said. So Adriel mentioned math, mathematics, and it's true. And you mentioned uh, that this is a specific area. And this is the difference. A glossary only cover a specific areas. And you can find glossaries at the end of a book, at the end of a book. Or sometimes, sometimes like in your spotlights, you find glossaries at the bottom of the page. And this is basically the difference. But if you um, don't have the idea so clear because Adriel and Fernando, I suppose, you have provided excellent responses because you are totally right. But if anybody from the classroom, we have 82 participants, you haven't understood very well because my English is not the best and you didn't get the explanation, uh, I'm gonna show you uh, a video, a video shot by uh, somebody else, it's, it's in YouTube. We're gonna watch the video, it's a six minute clip, it's, it's not too long. And uh, I hope that with this extra help, with this extra material, you get the concept perfectly well. Just let me share the video with you. Sure. Tell me. Uh -huh. um, do the page uh, 19. 18, 18 and 19. No, ni 19, we will uh -huh. do it. The exercises, yes, we will, we will work on yes. that. But I hope that we work together. If you want to go in advance, Abner, uh, uh, work, work. Teacher. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Okay. Eh, puede repetirlo. Uh, Se me trabó el audio. Uh, okay. Uh, what I said is that we're gonna watch a video with another explanation of the difference between dictionaries and glossaries, and then we're gonna come back to, to a summary of what you said, what I said, and what the video said. So I recommend you to pay attention to the clip. This video is a very, very short one, but an important one. We're going to look at using a dictionary and a glossary and all the important steps that we take to do that. Sometimes when we read, we come across words that we've never seen before. And when that happens, we can use a glossary or a dictionary to find out the word's meaning. So let's take a look at the difference between the two. Do you know them before we even click? Well, a dictionary is a book that gives definitions of any word in the English language. The bigger the dictionary, the more words you'll find in it. So a dictionary is a book all by itself, while a glossary is a part of a book and it gives definitions of words just in that book. So the example of that would be our little Lead 21 readers that we do together in small group time. If we find a yellow highlighted word, we look in the back at the glossary. And that glossary shows us words that are in that book. But if we needed to find another word that maybe wasn't highlighted yellow, we could go to a dictionary because that will give us any word in the English language. Now when we do go to either the dictionary or the glossary, there's some important features that we need to look at and understand. Now here's an actual dictionary and you can see lots of things on it. It actually looks very confusing and overwhelming at first. So let's take it a piece at a time. We start up here at the top where you see the words cottontail and coupon. We call those guide words. Those are the words that we start with when we're looking through a dictionary to find a word. So if I were to look for a word that starts with the letter C, I know I'm in a good place because the two guide words tell me that the first word on the page is cottontail 
and the last word on the page is coupon. So if my word starts with C, it just might be in here. So guide words help us find our page that we're looking for with the word that we're trying to look up. After the guide words, we can come over here and look at the actual definitions and see what we can find. When we look at the first word here, cottontail, if I'm a little unsure of how to say that word, there's a nice thing here called the pronunciation guide. And in our example, it's K-O-T-U-H-N-T-A-L-E. And if I sound that out, cut un tail cotton tail. It's telling you how to pronounce the word. So as we get into bigger and bigger words, that pronunciation guide will help you to understand how to say the word. After our pronunciation, we have something that looks familiar to us. In this case, it says noun. Well, that's where it tells us the part of the speech that that word is. So if I'm looking up the word couch, and I know how to pronounce it now, couch, I know that a couch is a noun because it's a thing. And it tells me right there in the dictionary that it is a noun. Oftentimes it's different parts of speech, like a verb or an adjective, and it will tell us right here at the part of speech part of the dictionary. The last thing to look at and to notice, down here under the word counter, we see the number one, and we see the number two. The reason for that is because this word has multiple definitions. You saw back up here there was a one and a two, what that means is the word counter can mean either a long flat surface, as in a counter in a department store, or it could be a small flat round playing piece used in some games or to do math. So like our little orange and red, or excuse me, yellow and red circles that we flip over, those are counters. But there's also the big flat counter that we have over in our classroom underneath our mailboxes, long flat surface. So the dictionary is showing me definition number one, definition number two. Some words have a lot more than that. So those are the important parts of a dictionary page. And if we try it on our own, I have another page here. And I was thinking I might try and look up the word board, B-O-A-R-D. So I'm going to start up at the top with our guide words. If I'm looking for a word that's B-O, then I'm going to look up here. Is B-O after B-L? in the alphabet. Well, B L M N O. Yes, it is. So now I'll go over here to make sure it's before the last word on the page. Body, B O, and my word is B O A, and this is B O D. So yes, B O A would be between B L and B O D. So the word board should be somewhere on this page, and if I look through one at a time, because that's really the best way to do it. Oh, there it is. I found board. So I'm just going to zoom in on that a little bit so we can see it a little bit better, although it's a little fuzzy. We can still understand. I see all the things that we talked about. Right here is my pronunciation. B or D. It tells me how to pronounce it. It shows me that a board is a noun. And then it tells me several definitions. A long, flat piece of wood used for building or making things. It could be the board of a company or organization is the group of people who control it. It could be meals provided to paying guests. Or it could be a specially marked square or rectangle in which a game is played, like a game board. Lots of definitions here. And then we get down to this special one down here where we change our part of speech. It's no longer a noun. We can also use board as a verb. That's an action that means to get on or enter a ship, an aircraft, or other vehicle. So if you board the plane, that means you're getting on the plane. So several different meanings for this word board. It's important that we look at it carefully. Okay, and that's it for using a dictionary and a glossary. Hopefully that helped you out a little bit in understanding all the pieces of it. Okay, uh, you could see, um... Ah, you couldn't hear, Adriel. Uh, you could. Did you hear the, the, the explanation in the video, guys? Yes, teacher. Okay, thank you. So, um, like I said, the, the, the difference between dictionaries and glossaries is very simple. A glossary is just uh, in a specialized vocabulary. For example, you read a book and you will find words that you 
probably did not understand in that particular book. For example, you read the Bible. In the Bible, there's a glossary at the end. Another example of glossary is the one that you have in your English, well, not in your English ID, not in your spotlights on literature. You have glossary. And a dictionary is more general. And this is basically the difference. Uh, do you have any questions about this? Or did I make myself clear? Did the video? Clear, teacher. We don't have a question. Okay, that's cool. So if you have no questions about this big difference, we're gonna work on some exercises together on page 19. Page 19. You're gonna use an online dictionary unless you want to work like the old school. The old school way is to have a book, a huge book, a dictionary, and look page by page uh, through these words. You have to define the following painting terms. All of the definitions you have to give me uh, about these words may be related to painting because you know that oil is the liquid that you use to fry food, to cook, but not in this case. You're gonna look for the meaning of oil, but related to the particular uh, area of painting. It's like an art glossary, like it says right here. You have oil, tone, color, palette knife, paint box, figure, and drawing. I will give you, Four minutes, four minutes to look them up in your online dictionaries. And I'm going to ask you which definition did you get? Okay. Four minutes. And then I'm going to start asking. One minute.
Okay, time's up. What could you find for oil? Anybody who wants to share the definition you find for oil? But yeah, me. Tell me, please. A small tick produce produced from plants that is used in cooking. Okay, yeah, it is uh, something that you can use in cooking. A plant, you said, that, that you can extract some liquid and cook. But remember that you have to relate it. You have to relate it to the painting term. Did anybody get the definition? Huh? It was form of painting. Uh huh? With pigments, with a medium of drying oil as the, as the binder. Okay. So I heard two voices here and you two were right. It's basically a thick paint with an oil base. It got oil, the one that you use for cooking or the ones that you can Repeat get teacher. Plants. It's a thick, thick, T-H-I-C-K, thick paints, 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 with, with an oil base, with an oil base. For letter B, remember that you have to relate all of these words to the art world, to the painting world. For letter B, for tone, anybody wants to- I teacher, please. A strange intensity or volume of a sound. Mm -hmm. But this is related, is it related to paintings? Is it related to art? Sure. Uh -huh. Mix of tint and shape. Uh -huh. Good, you got it. Basically, tone is the intensity of a color. Someone said, I think was a boy, I don't, I, I, didn't, I didn't get the name of the boy who said that is uh, the degree of a sound is also true. It is true. That's the definition for tone related to the music or for sounds. But because we are talking and we're relating everything to art, to paintings, we will say that is the degree or the intensity of a color. You can see that we have different tones in black. We have really dark black then you have something that is uh, uh, one tone less and it probably looks like gray. And there are some colors that are in the between thing. They're not black, they're not gray. It's because they have different tones. Is the intensity or degree of color. And this one is easy, color. Why do you say color? Color, color, anybody? Characteristic of visual perception. Characteristic of visual perception. Excellent. Any other? Because that one, that one was okay. A substance uh, that gives a particular color. That's a color. Then in letter D, palette knife. Long tube type of palette. Uh, someone said it's a long tube, and the other one said like something like a, a knife, I guess. A blunt tool. Uh -huh, a blunt tool. Basically, is a blade. It can be a knife. Yeah, can be a knife. But the purpose of this is to spread the color to spread the mix of colors, like, like the guy here. In order to create colors, you have to mix them. You have to mix some oil paints and you do it with the usage of the palette knife. So it basically is a blade in which you uh, mix, you use to mix the colors to create uh, different tones. Thank you. E, paint box. What is the paint box? That one is easy. 
a box holding dry paints. Exactly. Exactly. It is a box, like you said at the end, paint box. It's a box that contains paints. Figure. What is a figure related to the art world? A drawing shape or deception. Ah, exactly. It's a shape or a draw or a painting of a model of a person. That is a figure. For example, uh, Vincent Van Gogh's self-portrait. That's a figure. That's a figure. A painting, drawing, or model of a person. And drawing? A form of a portrait of the art. A habitual form of art. And, and the other person was saying? I hear a another. Form of uh -huh. visual uh -huh. art. A form of visual art. Yeah, you're both are correct. Is the act of making a picture, is a form of art, and everything you said is 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 correct. Is correct. So now we're gonna do this one. Um, I'm gonna help you with this because I'm gonna save you some time. You have to look up for the etymology or origin of the word. The etymology is the origin of the words, basically. Sure. Uh, tell me. Uh, oil is any unpolar chemical substance. Yeah, used for painting. Used for painting. Remember that we are associating all of these words to paintings. Yeah, because remember oil got multiple meanings and all of them are correct. But the thing is that we have to relate them to a specific area. In this specific area here is, is art and paintings. So the word sketch, the word sketch is, it got three origins, Dutch, German, and Italian. The word sketch is Dutch, German, and Italian. Letter B, the word landscape. Landscape is Middle Dutch. Dutch is D U T C H. D U T C H, Dutch, is Middle Dutch. Letter C, the word outline, that is English. That is English. The etymology is English. Letter D, proportion. Proportion is Latin. Latin, old French, old French, proportion. They were in E, modeling. Modeling is, is Latin, is Latin. In canvas, canvas is old French, old French. And this old one, French. old French, old French. And exercise number three, you just have to match the definitions. I'm gonna give you two minutes, then I'm gonna give the answers. Okay, um, because the class is almost over, uh, letter A is one, 
Letter B is six. Letter C is five. Letter D is number seven. E is number eight. F is two. G is number three. And H is number four. I repeat. A one, B six, C five, D seven, E eight, F two, G three, and H is number four. And you will finish this at home. Search in a dictionary for the pronunciation of the following words. Overexerted, overwhelmed, discouraged, impenetrable, squirrel, and oppressed. So you will find the, the pronunciation and you have to write it right here. So thank you very much, my friends. Uh, uh, for your attention and cooperation. Have an excellent weekend. Bye, teacher. Goodbye. Goodbye, teacher. Bye, Thank you, teacher. Bye. You too. Bye. 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 Bye teacher.